Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. And the scripture reads, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came to him and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Again, the devil took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word. One of the interesting things about this world is, of course, one of the uh, things that all of us, or not all of us, but so many of us carry with us now. We have our phones with us almost all the time, but they aren't just phones anymore. Each phone, or at least all the smartphones, have these different apps, specific programs that you can download for your phone. And so this makes every phone a little bit different. And I've had the privilege of looking into a few people's phones, seeing what's on there, and it's always interesting to see which of all these apps they choose to put on their phone. Which programs do they want? It often tells you a lot about the person because there are so many to choose from. I looked it up, and it says that right now, if you have an Apple phone, you have 2.2 million apps, little programs, that you can choose from. If you have a Google Android phone, it's more. It's 2.8 million programs, different apps. I noticed that a lot of these are, are to keep us in some way out of trouble. There's a lot of these apps to keep us on the straight and narrow, to help us to make the right decisions in our lives. There are quite a few that help us to avoid getting a ticket, to avoid the police in our lives. There's a police scanner app so you can keep up with what the police are doing. There is a uh, speedometer app where you can set it and it will, it will tell you your speed, but then it will also warn you if your speed gets too high on the interstate and you can get down lower. There's another one that is a speed trap app. And you put your destination in and it tells you where all the likely speed traps are between where you are and where you're going. And there's another that combines those two so that if you're going down the road and you're going a certain speed, it will warn you if you're speeding or it will warn you if you're getting to a place where there is a speed trap. There's even a breathalyzer app where you buy a little device and you blow into it and it tells the information to your phone and it tells you, have I had too much to drink? Should I be driving? Lots of apps to keep us out of trouble. And I want to add one today. In fact, I want to give each of you an app that you can carry with you, you can take with you, and it is guaranteed to keep you out of trouble. In fact, you can get rid of all these other apps that you have in your life to help you make good decisions, because this app is going to take care of all of that. It is more effective in helping you with your uh, diet than, than any diet app out there. It's more effective in keeping you in shape and exercising the way you should than any of the exercise apps that exist. It's better at helping you stay close in your most important relationship than any social media app. It's easy. It's, it's got the advantage of being free. This app is free, so I'm going to give it to each of you. And it's a very quick download. Some apps take a long time to download. This one almost instantaneous. There are no in-app purchases. Absolutely free. And here it is. I'm going to download it to each of you right now so you can have this app and you can take it with you. The app is the word no. So I'm going to give it to you now. Here it comes. No. There it is. Each of you has it now, the word no, and you'll notice there's a nice little loop on there so you can put it on your keychain. It also fits in your wallet, or you can even stick it onto your cell phone. Whatever it is you take with you, wherever you go, put it on there. Because I want you to take this simple app of no, the word no, with you wherever you go. And I don't want it to be one of those things you forget. 
forget, I actually want you to use this app. Because it can do us a world of good. And it can, if properly used, if used frequently enough, keep us out of such trouble. It helps us in so many ways. And here is one more. This word, properly used, clearly stated, it can save us so much time. Now, there's lots of apps out there for saving time, so you can get rid of those as well, because this app is going to save you probably more time than any to-do list, any calendar app, because how much of our time do we waste, how much energy do we have that we waste in debating with ourselves about whether or not to give in to some temptation in our lives? Back and forth. Should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? Well, here is this app, and you use it quickly when this temptation comes along, and you know it's something you should not do. You pull this app out, you use this word, one quick, strong no, and then it is over. And you can give all that energy that you are given to debating with whether or not you should do this particular thing, you can give that energy over to something far more positive in your life. I like the little cartoon I saw with the father and the teenager arguing about something. And in the final panel, the father slams down his hand on the table and he says, my answer is maybe, and that's final. <laughs> maybe is never final. Maybe, if we're going back and forth about whether or whether or not we should do something we know we shouldn't do, maybe, if we have that, using that, if we're thinking that about something we know is wrong, then we have already lost half the battle. And chances are, in the debate back and forth about whether or not we should do it, we're going to lose the whole battle. Thinking about it, going through it, whether or not we should do it, that, that is when we can fall to temptation. Here is a no to come along quickly to settle the problem. And now all of us, see, we can think, and we can actually do this in the, in the calm uh, of not being tempted in any way. We can sit down and we can think about the kind of character we want to have, the kind of person we want to be. And we can think about a few things that we can bring out that quick no for any time these temptations come along. For instance, we can, whenever any temptation to be racist comes along, to use some ugly word for a group of people. Whenever we are in the midst of thinking, well, how dare someone disagree with my worldview? How dare someone have a culture and, and they hold things important that are different from my own. And we become angry at that and we are tempted to give in to this kind of racism. We can have this quick no to present and then get on to more worthy things. Here's something else. Dishonesty in any form. Dishonesty, lying, cheating, stealing, whether it's great or whether it is small. Now, lying, of course, there are times when we have to lie to spare people's feelings, but we know the difference, don't we, between a lie that is fitly spoken, that is meant to help, and a lie that is harmful. So we can have this quick no ready when these things come up. There's so many opportunities in all of us face to steal in some way, to take from others. None of us have it more than those of us who are currently employed somewhere. And how tempting it is to steal from our employer. Maybe just a few office supplies. Maybe it is the theft of time, goofing around, doing something when we should be doing something else. That is wrong. And I'm not saying that because I am on your employer's side and I want to save them 50 bucks in post-it notes every year. I don't care about that. I care about you and Every act of dishonesty diminishes you. Every lie that is a tangled web diminishes you. 
It makes you think less of yourself. And it makes and it hurts your relationship with God. And it hurts your relationship with whoever or whatever you are stealing from. Don't be diminished by dishonesty. Have that no ready to go when the temptation arises. So that even with those small little matters, you can say absolutely no. Here's another one that comes up for so many of us. And that is the issue of gossip. And again, there's a fine line between talking about somebody, between sharing what we feel and what we think and asking about how they are doing some third party and slipping into some ugly gossip. There it is. We know it when we see it, as we said. And so we can be ready with this word no and that temptation to talk in some ugly way about someone else arises. There's an old saying that somebody said that says, all we need in this life to get through it successfully are a few strong instincts and a few plain words. Plain words, strong instincts, and a few rules as well. Simple rules that we can follow. And who gave us such the perfect rules, the simplest rules that we could possibly have? Well, Jesus Christ. Jesus told us, you know, there were lots of rules in the Bible, hundreds of rules, and they can be complicated, and they can be strange to us. So Jesus broke it down. He said, okay, well, what do you need to remember? What are the most important rules? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. You hear all the love going on there? Love God. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. You do these things, you keep this in mind, and follow the rules that will keep you from, from breaking this kind of love. And you can do it so quickly and easily with a simple word, no. No, I'm not going to do something where I am showing not love for my neighbor, but anger for my neighbor, impatience for my neighbor, intolerance for my neighbor. Then I am going to say no. Nothing that diminishes me, that hurts my relationship with God. To all of these things, one quick no. Not endless debate, not going back and forth about it, but one quick no, and we save time, and then again, we move on to what is more worthy of us. But the no is much more than just save us time. It is also one of the greatest protection devices ever devised. One quick no can save us from so much hurt, so much misery, so much pain. Okay, I want you to think back, and this may not be easy for some of you, but I want you to think back on your last big mistake that you made. The last big temptation you gave into that you shouldn't have given into. Okay, I want you to think about that and think about the guilt that came along with that. I want you to think about the worry that went into it for you. If others found out, I want you to think about the consequences for those other people and the consequences to you. And if they didn't find out, I want you to think about how worried you were they would find out. How worried you were somebody saw you, somebody heard you. I want you to think about all of that and then go further back in time and identify that moment where one single no would have prevented it all from happening. One particular no at one particular moment, and all of that misery would have been gone. That is what no does for us. It protects us from ourselves. It protects us from the consequences of these actions. If we can just say no, then that can immediately shoot down some big issue, some big problem, before it has to take flight in our lives. Just one quick no. I like the story about the boy who wanted a skateboard. But his parents told him, well, if you want a skateboard, you're going to have to save up your money for it. And uh, they thought it'd be good for him. 
to be able to save up and be able to earn the money himself. And he was doing a good job. And one day his mother heard him and he was in his room and he was counting his money. She could hear the coins and he had some dollars as well. And was seeing how close he was. And right as he was in there counting, the mother then heard the ice cream truck down the street playing its music. It's getting closer and closer. And the mother knew that the little boy, he wanted to stay for it, but she also knew how much he loved ice cream and loved the ice cream truck. And so she was fascinated to see which choice he would make. Would he choose saving for the skateboard? Would he choose spending some money on the ice cream? And she waited and she listened. The counting stopped as the ice cream truck got closer. The noise grew of the music, and then it started fading away. And finally it was gone. Still no noise from the boy's room. But then she heard him say a prayer. He said, Dear Jesus, please don't let the ice cream truck come down my street anymore. <laughs> well, the ice cream truck comes down all of our streets, comes down very often, and offers us all sorts of tempting flavors. One quick no can keep us from giving in to some temptation that is going to cause us so much misery in our lives. This, this works. It's amazing. It works in so many fields. One thing I've watched uh, for the last 12 years is as my daughter has grown, she has uh, played the violin. And I've noticed that in order to get better, she has to practice every day. And in order to practice, there are other things she has to say no to in order to practice, in order to get better. She has to say no to something else in her life. And that's so true. In order to reach the very best in our lives, we have to say no to something. And actually, this is the third thing I want to tell you about. No, it saves time and it protects us, but it also allows us to say yes to so many of the best things of life. In fact, I cannot think of a single good thing that I can say yes to without saying no to something else. Take our capital campaign. For instance, we do, we talk about how much we love the church, the beauty of the sanctuary, the utility of the Sunday school rooms, all the things we can get done in the Family Life Center. We talk about how much we love it, but what are we willing to say no to in order to support it? Are we willing? To say no to something in our lives. Because again, you cannot say yes to supporting the church in this significant way without saying no to something else. A monthly treat, perhaps. A gadget you were hoping to buy. Something. Something that you have to say no to in order to say yes to supporting the buildings here at the church. It doesn't have to be a lot of money. It doesn't have to be a whole bunch. But something must be sacrificed. Leslie and I were talking last night about what our pledge would be for the capital campaign. And one thing we do is when we're deciding on money, we always talk about, okay, well, we only have a finite amount of money, as all folks do. So what are we not going to do? Here's a significant amount of money we are no longer going to have. So how are we going to pay for that with meals? that we aren't going to go out for or bring back to the house with some little trip that we were planning. Something has to be sacrificed. Are we so proud of the church? Do we love the church enough to make that sacrifice? To say no to something so we can say yes to supporting the church. We see it in so many areas of our lives. This kind of transaction that we have to make. Have you ever seen a friend, or maybe you yourself, has transformed in some way? Some person who is usually out of shape gets into great shape, and it's amazing to see that transformation that takes place over a year or two or more or less, perhaps. 
That transformation comes because of a whole series of no's that that person stated in their lives. No to this temptation. No to that temptation. Yes to this good thing. Yes to this positive thing. People do it whose lives are transformed into an orderly life, into a productive life. Well, it is through a whole series of no's and yes's. Each week, I have the privilege of going down, usually about the time my lunchtime is uh, I'm leaving for lunch, or one of our AA groups is meeting. And I walk through the crowds there with those folks, I know many of them, and say hi to them, and I'm always, always in awe of this group of people. People who have been through so much, and who, through a series of yeses and noes, have meaningfully, have amazingly turned their lives around through yeses and no's properly placed. There are a lot of places where we see this. Many of us here remember the basketball player Pistol Pete Maravich. He played for LSU. He still holds the all-time scoring record per game in, or actually the whole uh, career scoring record in the NCAA Division I. He averaged 44 points a game when he played for LSU. He averaged 44 points a game. He seemed to, to his fans, hit everything that he shot. He would shoot and everybody was sure that it would just go in. And he made it look so easy. His shooting was incredible. And people would say he's so gifted an athlete. He's a natural athlete. And then I read something one paper pointed out. Yes, he is a gifted athlete. He is a natural athlete. One paper during his career pointed out that from the time he was seven years old, he would routinely spend three to four hours a day practicing shooting, practicing his jump shot, practicing his free throw, practicing his layup. And he transformed himself into that player that he began. Now apply this truth to you. He had to say no to all sorts of things in order to say yes to basketball practice and practicing his shooting. Now the no, clearly stated, right at the right time, is like a chisel in our lives. It chisels away all the things that we don't want to be there. All the negative, all the bad. It leaves the very best character remaining. The very best choices remaining. So I want you to think of that. This note that I have given you, think of it as your chisel to create the beauty of yourself like a sculptor chiseling away all that should not be there. And it's wonderful because we have such a model for what we should be. Of course, we're all different. We're all individuals. But we have the model of Jesus Christ to chip away everything that wasn't there for him, to reach for his love, to reach for his decency, to reach for his honesty and his compassion, to chisel away all that should be. That is the power of no, and it is difficult. It is difficult in this day and age to do this, to say no to temptation, to say yes to love and to decency as Jesus Christ showed because there aren't many role models out there. We need all the help that we can get. And so it becomes so necessary and so valuable to be able to call on God and to be able to pray this prayer. Loving God, Give me the power to say no. <laughs> Let us go. <laughs> Loving God, once again, we give you thanks for the choices that you give us. Lord, help us to make worthy choices for you. Give us strength when we are tempted. When these things come our way, we are all on our own. Alone. No church surrounding us. No support system right there. Help us to feel your power and your strength. Grant us the discipline we need in order to say no to those things we should and then say yes to all the very best as we have seen in your son Jesus Christ. 
is in his name we pray. Amen. Friends, if you are looking for a church home, I'd invite you to come here right now to the singing of our hymn of invitation and join with this church by confessing your faith in Jesus Christ and transferring your membership. Let's stand out as we sing this hymn of invitation.